Welcome to Die Trying. No apologies, YouTube. Mm -mm. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Head. What are we not apologizing for? We're building a PC. We're building it our way. Yeah. Next no. to a Van de Graaff generator. <laughs> without <laughs> static protection. Because we can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but today we're going to build a super low-cost PC that you can potentially game with. Potentially? Well, it's kind of funny. For about 230 bucks, you can put together a pile of parts. It's actually a decent PC. You could use more memory, you could use a faster processor, but you're gonna comfortably run Windows 7 or Windows 8 on this box. And this is kind of all resulting, uh, this crazy article on PCPro.com that Sebastian Peek did called The Budget Gaming PC Shootout Affordable System Builds Compared, where they started looking at like sub $500 machines. It's kind of funny, you know the difference between like a $500 gaming PC and a $230 perfectly functional PC is? A graphics card in Windows. Yeah, pretty much. Windows, whether it's Windows 7 or Windows 8 these days, sells for about 97 bucks online. Um, and a decent GPU like this uh, PNY GTX 550 Ti, this is a really crazy GPU. If you have like a three or $500 system that's using like the onboard Intel graphics and you can't play any games, for 140 bucks on Amazon.com, this will turn it into a gaming machine. PNY sent one up for us to test, which it's just a badass a, GPU for the a money. A modest gaming machine. A modest gaming <laughs> machine. Okay, well it's funny, right? For 1080p, right? 1080p has been the standard for desktop monitors forever. If you want to game at 4K, you're not going to be doing it with a GTX 750 Ti. Oh, um, but you know, for 20 bucks more than a GTX 750, you're going to get pretty good gaming performance, and you're going to get solid frame rates. Like this build should be generating like 60 or 70 frames per second. Not good enough for our super cool guy buddy that games in super twitch mode at like 120 frames per second um, and goes to in and out without us. But for most of us, it's going to be more than adequate gaming performance at the 60 frames per second refresh rate of most LCDs. Because 1080p, 1080p stayed the same and GPUs have gotten more powerful for less money over the last few years. Just saying. All right. So what are we using? Okay, so that's a G3220. It's a Pentium, right? And don't be offended when I say Pentium, because um, it's a Haswell, it's a dual core Haswell. Mm. Part's pretty good. Um, consumes like no power compared to a Pentium from back in the day. Um, that's four gigabytes of DDR3-1600. That sells for about $47 right now. Underneath that is the motherboard, an ECS uh, H80, I'm gonna read that off the box, because otherwise I'll screw it up. H81 H3-M4, uh, the PC per crew found that. That sells for 40 bucks. 40 bucks is kind of the, the line of the day because that 80 plus 430 watt power supply sells for, you guessed it, 40 bucks. And unfortunately, you're gonna end up spending like 50 bucks, 55 bucks for a one terabyte Western Digital Blue or a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda. Or you can gamble on the $20 drives at Newegg. See, <laughs> see how long that lasts, yeah. Could last forever, could die tomorrow. That's what Crash Plan is for. Image that system once you build it. All right, so what about a case? Uh, I really am a firm believer in scrounging cases. You can buy a $40 case if you want to. Uh, we found three empty cases in our workshop. I see them regularly at our local Goodwill for like 10 bucks. Nice. Garage sales for like five bucks. You know, an ATX case, uh, micro ATX case, they haven't changed much in the last umpteen years. And if you can pick one up for five bucks, pick it up for five bucks or rebuild an old system. What if? We did no case. You must be referring to the letter we got. I am. So Ryan wrote in, he said, my name's Ryan and I just moved into a new apartment. I have a bed and dishes and everything I need to survive, but my room is boring. Uh oh. I was wondering if there was anything you guys could think of that would liven up the wall or two. I always thought a really cool idea would be to mount a computer onto a piece of metal or something similar and hang it on the wall or something. I don't know. I'm really bored. <laughs> my room needs some per help personalizing it. Well, one, if you have any kind of access to a printer, especially if you're not paying for the cost of ink and printing, I suggest you check out our episode with Trisha Hershberger where we do rasturbating, which is basically turning photos into giant wall covering posters on the cheap. Uh, and second, PC on a board, we can do that. So mounting the actual motherboard was pretty easy. We just screwed it in with some wood screws or whatever those are. Because that's the way we roll. But mounting the hard drive and the power supply was a little bit more difficult. Are we gonna drill it? Are we gonna make a template? Are we gonna computer model a template and drill it from behind? And I was like, you know what? Go get some paracord. And so we basically, well, lashing is probably a generous word. We tied it to our board. I wonder if lynda.com has some knot tutorials. 
Ooh, Linden.com, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it's an amazing place to learn. Probably not a lot about Paracord, but if you want to learn programming or Photoshop techniques or editing or web development, it is amazing. They're a sponsor, Linden.com slash DIY. It's a place to go to get a free one week trial and go learn your face off. Hey, look, it's working. I'm <laughs> not gonna hold this up anymore because it's not light. No. You can hold it up. Uh, so we have everything mounted the way we want it. We're going to install Windows now and then see how it works as a PC and maybe even put it on the wall. And we'll probably need to figure out a way to make the cables prettier. It's got a sort of flying spaghetti monster flying thing spaghetti going. Spaghetti monster. It's noodly appendage has touched you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go find an operating system. Installing those updates, yo. Oh yeah. Rule number one of Titanfall, never take on a Titan with a pistol. It is a bad concept, but you know what? The $380 gaming PC is a pretty badass concept. We got Titanfall running at 60 frames per second with all the settings set to high. As far as I'm concerned, it kicks the snot out of an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 because I have all the PC games and PC utility and I'm not locked into a console environment. Admittedly, part of what makes this $380 gaming PC work is the fact that we had a copy of Windows 7, copy of Windows 8.1 might be better, but if we had to buy an operating system to go with this, okay, Okay, the cost goes up 100 bucks and we're up to like a $480 gaming PC. But what's crazy is if you don't need a GPU, you take that 750Ti off the price, whether it's to do a simple desktop or a home theater PC build or a super simple server build, you're looking at like $230 in parts, especially if you want to run Ubuntu or build yourself a home theater PC with Xbuntu or Mythbuntu. Are there caveats? Absolutely. You basically have two cores with one thread each, so you are not doing the mad multitasking. If you want to render photos in the background, while you're doing email and playing music, you might start to notice things slow down. But for gaming, you are golden. For most home theater operations, you're golden and the built-in Intel graphics on the chipset actually finally handle 24 frames per second if you wanna buy a Blu-ray drive or get your 24 FPS on. And it's kind of crazy. This thing barely uses any power. Even with the 750Ti jacked up and rendering at full speed, we're looking at less than an amp. It's just no electricity is being drawn by, okay, well, it's some electricity is being drawn, but compared to a system from a few years ago, it's just sipping power. So it's a really cool idea for like, I don't know, a home server box. Now, if you don't like wall hanging, well, you know what? We did it for the audience. You want us to do something for you? Now that you've been watching Die Tryon, tweet at Die Tryon, email Die Tryon at revision3.com. And if you haven't subscribed, stop and subscribe right now. DieTryon.com or YouTube.com slash Die Tryon. I'm Patrick Norton. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Michael says goodbye. We'll see you next week on Die Trying. How much was this computer, Michael, to build? Under 400. But this is cheaper than Xbox One. F you, Microsoft. You don't get a Kinect, though. Oh, God. Michael, don't tell me that. You don't get a Kinect? You don't get a Kinect. <laughs>